When uh, Mark Burns, uh, the Long Beach Creative Group, first came to me and asked me if I would uh, curate uh, <clears throat> a show for them, uh, a photography show for them, uh, we were pretty excited and we thought it was a great opportunity. But what I wanted to do was to build a show that was uh, not just sort of a legacy show of a lot of great photographers that had been around for a long time. I wanted to find the new work, the work that was breaking some boundaries in photography and people who were working with different processes. And I thought if we put those people together in a room, we'd have something pretty exciting. And I think we've done that. I think we've found nine really, really good photographers, artists, people who use a camera, they use materials, they use mixed media, but they do it in a different way. And um, I, th I think that's what this show is going to bring us. Um, there are all sorts of processes, not a one of them is the same. Um, Marka and her group have been terrific. Uh, Mola has been supportive of this show, and um, we're really looking forward to it. Well, I'm a digital artist, and I work primarily in abstraction. And um, a lot of my digital work involves digital photography in one way or another. I usually use digital photographs as source material for um, the photo manipulation or image manipulation that I do with my artwork. Around 20 years ago, I started coding again. And I developed a program that it's um, called Variable Image Abstractor, VIA for short. And with VIA, you load in a database of images. And generally, they're photographs. And um, so I'm taking digital images all the time. Um, first with, with a digital camera, but now with you know, an iPhone, I can just carry it with me all the time. And whenever I see something interesting, I take a photo of it. And I'll be, in the back of my mind, I will think, be thinking about different um, images that I want to put together um, or themes that I want to work with. Um, so going back to VIA, what it does is it reads a database of images that you input into the system. And it basically is kind of a remixer of the images. So it puts, places an image on the screen and then pulls another image from your database file and replace parts of the images on the screen. And then it just repeats that process. So it's an ever-evolving um, image collage made up of the images that you are in, in the database. Um, the pieces in PhotoVarious are from a new process that I developed just within the last year. For instance, I would take um, one image of a tree and put it through the system and it would take like little bits of the image, um, just little sections of the image and take that section and stretch it out to fill the whole screen. I would take a series of snapshots or screenshots off the computer and I may take, you know, 20, 30, 50, and then I started taking those individual images and put them in Photoshop and collaging them together to make a larger image. Art is a combination of uh, photography and encaustic. And um, encaustic painting is just working in beeswax, and that uh, allows me to uh, kind of image, I take the images that I photograph and I transfer them into the beeswax surface. It's a very flexible medium, it's just really fun. And uh, I was always interested in old style photography printing processes like daguerreotypes, tintypes, to get that distressed, kind of aged look in the, in the images. And to play with layers, encaustic painting really allows one to have many layers, uh, dimensions in, in the piece of art. So uh, with my process, I take all the images that I photograph get them printed on laser paper and when um, 
you're working with encaustic, you have to work on a, a rigid surface. It can't be a canvas. It can't flex. So the all the um, encaustic wax medium has to be melted. So it's basically just like an artist palette, just as an oil painter would work. It just uh, all the in, all the paint needs to be on a hot plate and uh, applied with a brush. So anything that is white in the photograph becomes transparent. So the color has to either come from the photograph or from paint. So once I lay all the uh, wax down, let it dry, then you just put the photograph face down into the wax, and then you just kind of burnish it into the surface. And you apply water to the back, which removes all the paper. And you just, just rub, rub off all the paper, fuse it into the surface with a heat gun, and it just it brings out all the, the toner into the surface. So from then, you can paint further, uh, score into it, draw, and uh, yeah, it's endless <laughs> and a lot of fun. I consider myself a conceptual photographer. I really enjoy it. Well, the exposure times for the Forjune technique is before I had uh, the clicker when I put my camera on bulb. So when I would look back in there, there were 20 second exposures, which surprised me because when I started doing other things after that, um, I would do my exposure sometimes a minute. Okay, the one photo to trust, that was one that took a lot of takes. I had to precisely set the camera, run in the photo, run in my camera frame and put one hand out and then count in my mind and then change positions and put the other hand out. A lot of those were overlapping. Um, they weren't in time. I had my butt in the picture. Um, that took a long time because I didn't like the overlapping. This one, when it came out, just it's overlapping just a little bit. I'm very pleased with that one. work in abstraction. It's hard for me to say that because really I think of myself as being very literal. Um, I, I think of myself as being very concrete. I work with landscapes and specifically I like entropy. I like dealing with things, how things ebb and flow, um, how chaos becomes order and then it evolves over time. And depending on what I'm doing, the subject matter will change, um, of course, depending on the type of entropy I'm dealing with. And the um, materials that I use also change. So I might paint, I might do printmaking, and make, do a little bit of sculpture. Um, and all of that is informed by the work that I'm making, um, specifically dealing with landscape and entropy. Photography is this odd kind of side thing that I do that has absolutely everything to do with what I make, but absolutely nothing to do with what I make. I, I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But when I think about entropy and I think about landscapes, um, I think the most valuable way for me to understand it is to go and visit places. So I'll make road trips to places that have entropic events. Uh, often they're weather patterns, uh, buildings that have been demolished or partially demolished, um, sites where there's evidence of something that has taken place. So um, I think of them going, I think of it as forensic photography, like I'm going to a crime scene, that kind of, kind of um, atmosphere. And when I go to take pictures of the um, sites, that's how I think about them. I think about them as being places where an event has taken place and I want to try and document it and work backwards to figure out how the destruction happened and then think about how the future might evolve. It's been this great um, pleasure to do the push and pull that I love to do in drawing and painting generally in this new format um, uh, where I can really play with the, the real photographic realistic photographic um, elements that I start with 
and maintain that realism while I continue to push and pull through the process. And I've really enjoyed this whole thing. I'm actually quite delighted to be in this show. I've enjoyed it. For me, photography has always been a sort of vehicle to be curious. Um, but I wanted to go deeper than that and kind of get into the psyche of um, what these people were experiencing and mentally, emotionally, what they were taking on. Um, and this really gave me an insight into what people were going through, I would say mentally more so. And kind of using photography as a way to, to be a little nosy in the people's lives. What surprised me was somewhat how vulnerable people were in their responses. Um, for example, one of uh, my close friends, he had, to, he had to move and relocate in order to work. Um, and just how the, the family dynamics and how um, moving back to his hometown influenced just everyday life and everyday um, spirits in a way. But one of the other persons that um, you'll see in the exhibition is, uh, her name is Leah, and she just kind of went for it when she was explaining uh, her experience, uh, dealing with anxiety, dealing with depression, with social um, depravity, and just uh, trying to understand what to do in this time. It was that kind of reality that I wanted to capture in her image um, specifically, and this kind of lowness and heaviness that she felt. To see the people that we closely interact with going with such going through these kind of heavy things on a daily basis, I think, surprised me. As artists, this is what we do. We either are trying to self-express or we are trying to... Um, I don't know if there's a specific word, but showcase and kind of summarize to the public um, a shared experience, a collective experience. <laughs> The uh, pieces that I am uh, showing in Photo Various uh, are uh, three pieces called Garden Party. And um, uh, as far as my process uh, in mixed media, um, I use photography, I use paint, I use paper, I use uh, shadows, I use light, I shoot on different surfaces, I shoot with light blasting through pieces of paper. I never really know what that process is going to be. I work here in my studio and um, it might take any any direction at all, but I usually just start with a single thing. In this case, the whole garden party series, of which there are now eight pieces, uh, that started with just a tar stain on the sidewalk. I was out walking with my wife. I said, gosh, that's interesting. I took my iPhone. I took a picture of it. That became something, and now, like I say, it's seven, seven pieces. What I'm doing is photographing little tiny bits of, in garden party, little tiny bits of flowers, stems, leaves, dirt, bugs, all sorts of things. All of those make their way. In each garden party uh, piece, there's probably 150 to 200 photographs assembled there with backgrounds, etc. The background of two of the pieces that I'm showing uh, are tabletops that I shot in Paris. I was in Paris in October and um, walking by. A little cafe, some blue tabletops that were sort of distressed from people scraping glasses and silverware and all sorts of things across them. I like the color, I like the feel, so I built the garden party on top of those things. And um, so that's how random my process is. I have some ability to move the thing around, but basically I'm just kind of a, a visitor. I'm seeing where that piece is going and I'm trying to follow it as faithfully as I can. One of the great things about the Long Beach Creative Group Gallery is that Marka and Dorta and all of the people that run uh, that gallery and that contribute time to it, their, their original idea was to have a place where people had a better shot at showing their work in the Long Beach area. And um, it seemed to them at the time, and they were right, that it was, it was limited. So they wanted to have a space 
where more work was being seen, better work was being seen, uh, where they could investigate you know, alternatives in the arts. And they've really done a great job of that. I think that, that the Photo Various show, which is about pushing boundaries in photography and cameras, I think, it, I think it's just an indication of the kinds of things they're pursuing with that gallery. Um, MOLA, a Museum of Latin American Art, was kind enough to step in when we talked about the project with them. Um, they thought that sounded interesting and, and, and came to our side with some support. So the, the whole thing that Marka and her gang have put together is a pretty exciting thing. You would want it to happen again and again and again but, uh, it, it, with other galleries, but the fact is they're doing it and they're doing a great job.